Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast. First episode of the new year. And I'm stoked to jump into it and get rolling. And Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm pretty fucking awesome, Nathan. How are you today? I'm pretty fucking awesome as well. And, uh, you know, there's there's this saying, new year, new you. And there's there's this mentality of, of a lot of times when people get to the end of the year and they get, they're going into the new year, they want to talk about what the next year, what they have in mind for the next year. And um, I kind of wanted to, if it was possible, just kind of pick your brain about what the new year looks like for you. And what, what were you thinking about as far as Sales Gorilla, the Sales Gorilla podcast and Landon Porter land? Mm, interesting question. And before we hopped on the call that we had before we started recording this episode, you had kind of prompted me with wanting to talk about that whole idea for, I think, an actual different reason. I think a lot of people um, kind of use the the new year, new me thing as a crutch because they don't really have the the willpower or the balls or the fortitude or the spine or whatever you want to call it to actually just fucking handle their life. And I think that's kind of where you were going with that whole thing. However, there's another aspect to this. The other aspect to this is the calendar is like a scoreboard, right? What you did in 2019, you're certainly welcome to repeat it in 2020 if that's, you know, your deal. If there's a bunch of shit there that's broken, I don't think because it's a new year and I'm going to make all these resolutions, I don't think that's how it plays out. I think either you've got the ability and the fortitude to actually handle shit or you don't. And you can't, in my opinion, and I'm just one guy, some, some guy on the internet, my opinion is you can't leave it up to, oh, it's a new year. Oh, fuck, this one's a new decade. My life's going to be so much better because I'm going to do all this shit. Probably not. You're probably going to continue doing most of the shit that you've been doing, mostly the way that you've been doing it because that's how it works, right? That's just how it is. If you actually need to make a big change, just make the big fucking change. You don't need to wait until the new year. Anyways, with all that out of the way, I do think that utilizing the calendar as a scoreboard in a sense, as a, as almost like a tracker, right? Here's where you started. Here's where you got to. Here's where you spent the last year at. What's next? For the last year, 2019, we've gone deep on client acquisition. And for 2020, we're going to get into what comes after client acquisition. And there's a couple of big pieces to this. One is... It's easier to keep a client than it is to go get a new client. And for those of you listening to this that actually really fucking love what it is that you do, scaling and growing is not about more. It's about deeper. And it's about deeper in a couple of different areas. I know, Nathan, for those of you that watch the podcast, you're totally going to be laughing your asses off. It really is about doing more with less at a deeper level. That's really what client-centric business is really all about. Until you're at the place where it only makes sense to scale by bringing in more and more and more clients. That's a totally different thing. We're even gonna have an episode in the next few weeks about this. I'm more interested in different kinds of businesses being operated differently. This business that I've got is really a client-centric lifestyle business. But there's so many other aspects to this that will be a much larger business. But what we're talking about is client acquisition and the next level of that is, is going deeper with your current clientele and going longer. There's another one for you, Nathan, right? If you're listening to this and you're a service-based business owner or you own an agency, if you have the data to look to see how long your clients typically stay with you, there's a bunch of opportunity to drastically change your business. If they stay with you for five months, what if they all stayed with you on average for 10? 
If they all stay with you for an average of one project, what if they stayed with you for four, right? It's easier to do that if you understand how to do it than it is to just go get another new client and go get another new client. And for all of 2019, we focused on going and getting that next client. 2020, to answer your question, Nathan, this is going to be about what do you do with that client now that you've got them? And there's a couple of pieces to that. Okay, so a couple of things come to my mind as a marketer. I know that advertising dollars to get somebody to buy the first time you're going to spend a lot more money than you're going to have to spend to get somebody who's already purchased from you, enjoyed that experience, and then you remarket to those people. It's, it's way cheaper to get them to buy again. Um, is, are, are you saying it's sort of similar in, and I'm asking almost already knowing the answer, but what is the similarity between marketing towards customers and that reality versus the uh, retaining clients and the reality of that. Really what it comes down to is, is once you've got the client, you've got a bunch of knowledge, you've got a bunch of context, you have understanding, right? When you're getting a new client, there's, that's all the newness, right? Getting to know somebody. Well, once you've had a client and you've been serving or providing them for a period of time, if you're doing some certain things, you have a much deeper, better understanding with and for them. That's where the actual leverage is. And if you understand that, you can turn a one-off client or a one or two project-based client into an ongoing long-term client. And there's a, what, here's what's really cool. The last 10 days or so, I've really been thinking about this. A, a huge majority of people in my world fit into one of two categories. They do a service, they, they, they do one thing, they do it really well, and they're constantly getting new clients, right? And then there's another group of people that they have multiple offerings. And both groups of those people have the ability to drastically change their business in a much more positive way, leveraging the clients that they've already got and the clientele that they've already worked with than going and getting new clients. You said something about the majority of the marketing dollars happen when you're acquiring a client. Right. Well, there's really, and there shouldn't be from my perspective, if you're a service-based business owner or a consultant, there should be no more marketing dollars to marketing to customers. That's building a relationship. And if you know how to do that and you know how to identify other areas that they're dealing with that you can fit into their world. That's the beginnings of client creation, getting a client, going out on a date and getting a client and dating them for a project two or three months. Yeah, cool. That's fun. But now you got to go do that again. Well, if you're really good at what you do, you've actually got the ability to do something two or three times greater for them for two or three times longer for them. And you don't even know it right? That's ultimately what we're talking about here. How do you take a one-off client or a project client or somebody that's been at this level with you and your agency? They pay you $1,500 a month and it just is what it is, whatever. There's no, there's no growth there. There's, there's no fun there. How do you take that $1,500 a month client and turn them into a $3,500 a month client and have them wanting to pay you $5,500 a month? That's what I'm talking about. That's where we're headed for 2020. So I'm going to play devil's advocate because you recently, actually you and Adam in the background of my business, you have ran me through this. And when it first came up, I objected right away. I said, well, I'm a copywriter. I write a sales page for somebody. I write an email sequence for somebody and then I'm done. And there is no way to do what you're saying in my business. So for the people out there, that are listening and they're saying, well, that's great, but my business model just doesn't accommodate more than what I'm doing right now. What would you say? Are there some people that their business model, they'd be right and they, it just doesn't work for them or can anybody make this work? Sure. I think there's, there's exceptions to every rule, but I would say from my perspective and my experience that everybody who's good at the thing that they do they're stuck doing that 
version or that aspect of it and they don't see these other growth opportunities because they've got they've concluded they've got a belief that this is just how it is like you had right i'm a copywriter i bring on a client i write their copy and then they're gone why you could fucking do this you could do that you could do this you could do that oh well, i hadn't thought about that exactly that's exactly what i'm talking about everybody i think has the ability to do more with their current clients and here's where most people they, they get it in their head well all of these people that i'm working with they wouldn't want this other thing at a higher level that i could do yeah go back to the fucking client acquisition thing you went after the wrong people to begin with for me what was weird about it was all of my previous clients that I went back to that I had done the old model with all except for one of them said, no, that doesn't make sense. This is how we're used to working with copywriters. This is how we want to work with copywriters. This is how all of the other copywriters that we employ do it. Why would we make a special exception for you? You little prima Donna. But, but when I went to, few people that were coming in to me fresh and I was able to establish, yeah, this is how everybody else does it. I don't do it like that way because of this. Those people were much more. So selling new people on it versus my old clients, I actually had a lot easier time selling new people. I want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. The person that you are with the understanding after having that aha moment that things could be different is a different person than you were beforehand right? There's this whole thing in this space about client attraction and, and like attracts like and water seeks its own level. I've said that 400 times in, in 70 some episodes to some variation. Who you are being right now is aligning with other people that are very similar, right? If you're, if you're limited, if you're not doing to your potential, if you're living in that space of well, I, I make three or four or five or 10 or 20 grand a month or whatever that number is. No, it's kind of what it is. Guess what? The fucking people that are actually saying yes to you, whether it's through messenger, the way that we teach to enroll clients or it's on a phone call or it's in person at Starbucks, they're those kind of people, right? It's like, duh. So when you have this different perspective of how you could do things, Generally, that changes your persona and the way that you're presenting, the way that you're coming off, your fucking energy level, right? That changes. Well, guess what? Now that aligns with different people. And if you have this assumption, if you have this belief in your head that really, if you're going to hire a copywriter, they should do all the things and they should be on with you forever and at this giant monthly retainer and oh my God, look at the ROI that could bring. Well, if that's your conclusion, if that's your assumption, guess what? The people that are saying yes to you, they think the same way and it just makes sense, right? So all of your old clients, but one who said, no, cause we don't do it that way. You're a fucking prima donna. Guess what? That's who you were being when they said yes to you because natural relatability. I don't know if we've heard that before, but that's how it works. Okay. So a lot of what to, Previous to 2020, Landon Porter has been getting clients because that's what people come to your world for. They're like, hey, I need to get new clients. A lot of what you do is, hey, stop being such a desperate dipshit settling for anybody who's willing to hire you. Figure out who you really want to work with and only go after those clients. So that's kind of step one and step two. What's step three? Because I don't think that we've explored very much of step three and maybe beyond that. Step three is adjusting the term or the length of time that you work with a client, right? I've got clients in my world that are one project people, right? This is how you used to be. You would be hired to do a project, you'd do a project, you'd get paid, and then time to go get another client. I've got other clients in my world that bring on a client and they do an agency thing, right? Building websites and doing marketing and shit like that. And they, they bring clients in. This is what we do. This is what it looks like. This is how much you pay. This is how long it's going to take us to have that effect that you hired us for. Well, once that time period's over, 
then they go get another client? Like what? No, you need to understand where else you can leverage what you can do in your client's world. And you begin seeing that when you start having conversations with prospects, you go, fuck, if I can get my foot in the door with this thing that they're wanting to hire me for, the thing that I'm known for, right? And it goes well, and I still like them after the period of time that we've agreed to work together, that first date, I see this is next. And then I see that needs to be in conjunction with that thing. And then there's this other whole thing that we could do. And then there's this, and then there's that. And oh my God, three years down the road, look at what we could do. You begin to see that and you begin to forecast that. And it changes who it is that you're talking to as prospects because you're attracting people that that's the path that they're on. They just don't know it yet. And so we begin looking at it going, okay, cool. This is the thing that I do. This is what I'm known for. This is how good I am at doing the thing. And then we go, okay, cool. If you had them for three days at a time and you could go over this bigger thing that they could do next, how would you do it? Awesome. Do you want to sell that? Oh, you charge 1500 a month. What if we charge 15 grand for that three day thing? Oh my God, mind explosion, right? There's a bunch of different ways to go with that, but it's adjusting the terms that you're working with your current clients. And yes, the people that you're working with will begin to change. You will begin to upgrade your clientele. Okay, so I know the answer to this question for me because I just recently went through it, but you've worked with a lot of people. What is holding most people back from actually doing this? For the people that are like, hey, I've been doing this thing, I love doing it. I love most of the people that I'm working with. I've been doing it for 15 years, but I'm sick of the roller coaster. I'm sick of the feast and famine. What's holding most people back from taking that next step? Generally, it's a mindset issue. Generally, it's, uh, that's not for me. I don't deserve that. I can't do that. Who would want that? Everybody wants to buy this thing. Nobody wants to buy that thing that I'd really rather be doing now, right? It's that, it's a, it's a mind block of, well, this is what everybody wants and I've been doing this for 15 years, so this is what they buy, so this is what I'll sell. It's actually not having the balls to say, fuck that, I'm tired of that. I need to grow and evolve and this is where I'm headed and some will come with me and some won't and that's okay. How does this relate to you? How, how is this affecting you? Dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually have, I have an 18 month window on my um, practice. And what I mean by that is, is when I begin doing something new, generally within about 18 months, I'm ready for a shift. I'm at the second shift in my three years of doing the sales gorilla thing. I'm at that next, ah, I need to lean in. I need to go into the deeper end. I need to adjust and evolve. That's exactly what it is. Um, I've done the client acquisition thing. Anybody that actually has taken the time to go through it and implement it gets huge results. There's only one way to do social selling and that's to not be a dick, to identify who and how you are and to be that and go find people that seem to resonate with that and then have conversations. Like that's fucking client acquisition, right? What comes next? Going out on a date or two is really fun and it's awesome and it's amazing and you have a really good time and oh my God, hopefully you didn't catch anything you can't wash off. But there's a whole lot more that can be had with that client or that individual or those three other individuals, like whatever your preference is, I don't care right? Beyond that first interaction or two. And as it applies to me, that's what I'm interested in. That's the next phase of client acquisition is, is what is client retention? How do you grow and scale a business and do more with less? It's not about getting the next client. It's not about getting another client. Like if you know how to do that, your business model is now ready for how do I keep them longer? And by longer, I mean a lot longer. Okay. We're about to head out of here. I am going to post a quotable. My favorite quote, my favorite quote of the show is 
if you want to do more with less, you have to go deeper. I love it. <laughs> Landon, where can people go if they want to check out more episodes of the podcast? Well, a couple of things. You can go to salesgorillapodcast.com. I think we're on what, 73? This is episode 73. Some of you people like binge listening to shit. You can also catch this on YouTube, on our, on our YouTube channel, if you want to watch all of the crazy antics that Nathan and I actually do on the video piece of it. But here's something that I would ask you to do. If you're listening to this and what you heard in this episode resonated, I'd like you, seriously, like rewind this and write it down. But I want you to send me an email at lp at the salesgorilla.com. And in the subject line, I want you to put 2020, okay? And then I want to hear from you. I'm really opening up myself to the more than a thousand of you that download every podcast to send me an email. Let's actually have a conversation. I'd like to get to get to know you and understand you and where you're at and what you're looking to do in 2020, especially if you've kind of already got the client acquisition piece down. I have something special for you. And if you send me an email with the subject line 2020, you'll actually get an email back from me. It won't be from some fucking automation. It'll literally be from me. And it's special just for you. And that's LP at thesalesgorilla.com. All right. Awesome. Okay. Until next time, man, we will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I can't stand. And I'm sure that's mutual. Peace out.